A whole month has gone by since the last Into the Radius 2 update video that I put out, and now it's time for another. Originally I had planned to be covering two dev diary entries, but with the amount of work CM Games has ahead of them, they just haven't had the time to release a second one. And that's quite alright, shit happens and their main focus is getting the game into early access. There's still plenty to talk about with Dev Diary 11 and the other things they have been doing, so let's get right into it. CM Games plans on implementing the same concept of progression as we're used to from Into the Radius 1. We'll have a security level that raises as we play through the game, unlocking better stuff as time goes on. For our security level to rise, a top priority mission must be completed, which is the same way the first game was set up. But before we get a top priority mission, we have to do side missions. But here's the difference. Instead of, say, 5 missions, we have to acquire 5 points. The number of points a mission pays out will depend on the difficulty of the particular mission. This is a change I'm very glad they're making, because I started to get really burnt out the side missions of ITR1. I kept receiving so many that were either kill a rift, go find an artifact, or get a package, and those just spiraled into having to kill 3 rifts or find 3 artifacts. It just felt a little lazy and I felt like I was always doing the same thing. I don't mind the cleanup missions because the combat in the game is always fun, except at night when you can't see the unarmored mimics. But it felt like the overall variety of side missions was super low. But speaking of variety, they mention how we'll have more missions to choose from as our security level goes up. This is a step in the right direction, but if the side missions aren't any more fun than the lower security level missions, then this isn't worth much, but I'm hopeful they're cooking up something good this time around. The world is also going to change as our level goes up and we progress through missions. I'll give the example in ITR1 terms. Imagine you just finished a Farewell Feast mission. You're security level 5 at this point, so you're the biggest, baddest motherfucker in the radius, with a decked out rifle, AP ammo, body armor, and helmet. You decide to venture into Perv Meirut because, fuck it, why not? But instead of a few spawns here and there, some fragments, and some pistol wielding mimics, you encounter the heavy AS Val mimics, armored seekers, and an anomalous field in an area it was never in before. That's the sort of stuff we're going to have in ITR2, and I love that. I really like the idea of the enemy density changing, but they take it further to expand to all game elements changing. Anomalous clusters can get more difficult over time, and even have the potential to find more artifacts in that location where you used to only be able to get one. Here's a specific part I want to read directly from the diary. The composition of enemies, anomalies, and artifacts will depend on the base difficulty of the location. You won't encounter the most dangerous enemies in the first location, except maybe very rarely and only at max security level. The same goes for loot, especially artifacts. Level increases, loot quality goes up, but not drastically. Early locations will be able to find more valuable items, but never once as valuable as the later levels. They also state they want to maintain the feeling of player progression, so the deeper we go into the radius, the more dangerous it gets. They are aiming for more variety and diversity in the world itself, and I really like that decision. Now we'll get more into how the mission structure will be changing. Instead of a mission being one objective, there will be several steps requiring us to perform certain actions as part of that one mission. Think of this kind of like the intrusion, how we had to go to a separate area to collect a bomb, then go to a different location, blow up a door, go inside that room to collect a case, then walk back to base with that case. Missions can now contain various scripted events to occur, such as enemies or anomalies spawning in. That's another great feature, and what could make this even better is if different scripted events happen to different people. Like say I play top priority mission number 2, and right after I complete step 3, a group of enemies spawns in in the path I need to take to leave that area. But for you, a minefield of anomalies spawns in that same location. And I'm not saying that would be easy or hard for them to implement, I'm just saying it would be cool if they took it to that level. I think it would really help replayability, but the entire scripted events idea is a very good one, so I'm glad they're doing this. The last bit of importance from Diary 11 is yet another really good change. In addition to money as a mission reward, there will occasionally be an item included with that money as a reward. In Early Access, we'll see four types of mission steps available from which all initial Early Access missions will be constructed, and the number of steps will increase over time. That's it for Diary 11, now let's move on to something else I think is important for us in regard to ITR2's development. If you go to the Steam Community tab for this game, you'll see multiple posts with Dev Question as a title. CM Games is asking us for our input related to a certain subject to help gather ideas as to what we as a community would like to see in the game. Whether or not they implement some of these suggestions from the community remains to be seen, but for the time being, they're creating these posts and giving us a place to openly toss ideas towards them. I encourage all of you smart fellows with good ideas 
to go over there and just comment your thoughts on a subject. And maybe, just maybe, we might see your idea in the game. You won't be seeing any of my suggestions in there, but that's because I'm not a smart fella. I'll leave that job to you big brain explorers. Lastly, I've been fortunate enough to get some answers regarding a few questions that were asked in the last video. Regarding the platforms this game will be launched on, the developer's sole focus right now is launching on PC VR. That means no Quest Store or PSVR 2 release has been announced as of now. For the foreseeable future, they say, PC VR is the only platform we could promise availability on. The last question I've been able to get an answer on because someone else brought it up is crossplay among different platforms. Quoting CM Games directly here, I think cross compatibility will be explored as an option when the time comes, but at the moment there's nothing set in stone that I can promise. But from the way that sounds, I'd like to believe they do intend on launching to other platforms. Whether that means just the Quest Store or to PSVR 2 also, I'm not sure. We'll just have to wait and see. That's going to be everything for this update video. Thank you to all of you who came out here to watch this. I hope you're just as excited for this game as I am. And if you're not completely filled in about what's going on with the development of ITR2, I'll put a link in the description for the first video I did covering Dev Diaries 1 through 10. Anyways, that's the end of this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Now get out of here.